G'day folks and welcome to Gourmet Shed. Well this week we're looking at soundscapes for your railway layout. In other words, atmospheric sounds to uh, be in the background of your railway. Uh, I mean at uh, this point in time a lot of people are focused on the sound coming out of uh, their locomotives with uh, DCC etc. And you can get some extremely good sounds of uh, um, stoking the bunker and uh, um, the whistle and the actual uh, sound of steam or diesel or whatever that's uh, uh, associated with that particular loco, but uh, that's it. There's no, there's no birds chirping, there's no traffic, there's no dogs barking, sheep baying or cows mooing, there's nothing like that going on as well. So if you want to make a realistic soundscape uh, as well as the locomotives, it would be nice to have something going on in the background as well, depending on uh, where your railway is set. I'll just show you an example of uh, what I've done here, uh, and hopefully it will come out reasonably well on the, uh, on the film. Um, obviously it's much better being in the room here, but I'll, I'll set that up and we'll get it going. Right folks, now all the sounds you will hear after I stop talking are coming from the sound system. Now that's severely cut down folks, I've, I've actually got that on a uh, CD, it's just a test run really, but that CD will go for 76 minutes with uh, various sounds in there, there's even some cars and uh, other noises as well, there's some more station announcements, and so the world's your oyster with this, uh, you can sort of uh, tailor it to suit what you want. And um, the way it's being delivered to the layout is through, um, that particular one you heard is through a little... Uh, sound system I've got down here. Now, uh, this little uh, uh, Panasonic here is what's delivering the sound. So it's stereo sound and as I said this one's actually coming off a CD. Now um, the uh, sound is transferred to speakers under the uh, layout and I'll show you those. Right now this is up the uh, the eastern end under where the uh, the church is and uh, this is a 6 ohm speaker, 125 watts, and it was pulled out of a, uh, an enclosure uh, that I found. I found these actually on the street, and they were pretty rubbishy speakers, just plastic boxes and everything. 
and I've actually taken the speakers out of the enclosures and this one here is actually holding up onto the steel support bar there just by its magnetic attraction that's all that's holding it on there so you can actually move these things around if you want to and the other ones up the other end so we'll just scoot up there yeah the other ones up here under the station area and uh, just sitting above the aircon there now you might think well why the heck have I taken them out of the speaker enclosures well the reasoning behind that is it's, it's purely to do with sound uh, nothing to do with aesthetics or anything like that I found that with the speakers uh, in the boxes you get a sort of um, a booming effect caused by the, the the box itself it's it's helping to project the sound forward now in an atmospheric sort of situation here I don't want the sound to be directional I want it to be multi-directional so and also I want to get rid of that booming sort of effect I want the sound to sound more flat if that if you can if that makes sense so what happens with the speaker removed from the enclosure is that uh, the sound is not only projected forward from where it would normally come but it's also projected outwards from the back of the speaker there's there's little slots in the back of the speaker itself uh, and the sound is reflecting off the underneath of the baseboard as well so it's moving even though it's you can say yes that's over to the left it's sort of multi-directional as well it sort of spreads and it gives that sort of uh, surround effect if you can say that but it's only stereo uh, so that's why I've gone that way and as I say probably the main reason behind it was to get rid of that booming effect you don't want big noise you want it, the scale of the noise in relation to the scale of the the landscape uh, if that makes sense yeah so that's why I've done that now uh, you don't have to do a CD uh, it's up to you how you go about this but uh, I've also got it coming through a computer system as well. Now folks just next to that little stereo I've got this old PC set up uh, this is uh, about one gigabyte of, no it's not it's only 512 megabytes of RAM um, Pentium 4 processor or something it's it's a dinosaur and uh, it's running Lubuntu uh, software and uh, part of Lubuntu is this audacious um, program to uh, to uh, play music basically and uh, I play it through that and I uh, run the computer system through the auxiliary input of the little stereo there so um, the advantage with the uh, computer system over the uh, CD method is that you can have uh, any number of uh, files on there as, as, as soundscapes and you can uh, play those uh, in any way that you like so you've got a, a lot more freedom with the computer system um, but um, you may have a, an old computer yourself, you may have a sound system attached to that somehow whatever you, or however you do it, it's up to you but the important thing really is how we put the sounds together and that's always been a bit of a, a barrier because there's lots of free sounds uh, available on the internet, you know, dogs barking, um, fire engines, planes, you name it you know, there's, there's thousands and thousands of different sounds available that you can download as mp3s or WAV files um, so there's, there's lots available there but to um, uh, get a good atmospheric uh, sound is very difficult um, from those free sound sites now what I've found is that if you go onto uh, YouTube there's uh, soundscapes on, on YouTube that play for up to eight hours and uh, so it depends on the category you're looking for. I was looking for uh, English countryside uh, soundscapes and uh, these things are built uh, as relaxation aids for people. So they have a beautiful picture up there and then they have the sound of birds singing, uh, streams running, that sort of thing. There's, there's many different types that you can have a look at and so on. And so what I've done is I've sort of uh, used the free sound sites to get my little sounds like sheep baying and uh, cows mooing, the um, uh, church bells, whatever I want. I, I've, I've used those small files from free sound sites to overlay on the background of my 
um, ambient country soundscape. So uh, yeah, so that's that's the way I've done it. And um, so what you can do is go on to YouTube and uh, download the sound from some of these uh, soundscapes, uh, and you've got a basis there for your background uh, and it could run up to eight hours. I mean the CD I've got here at the moment will run for 76 minutes and uh, preferably when you when you look at these things it's better to get a soundscape that's been created without doing loops in the sound. I mean they might create or record sound for say five minutes and then copy that and paste it to the end of it, copy that, paste it to the end of it. You can build it up to whatever you want, six, eight hours. But really, it's the same five minutes worth of sound just going around and around and around. It's preferable, I would think, if you can uh, find one that's uh, a straight through recording. So you get variation in it. You know, say an hour would be plenty, and then you can loop that. So you listen to it for an hour, and then it repeats if you like if you're having a running session that long. Very good. So it's all about uh, how we put this stuff together and that's what we're, we're going to have a look at next. Right folks, we need to download uh, two pieces of free software. The first one is this one which is called Mixpad from NCH Software. Uh, you can find that online and I've got version 5 here and it is free software and this is what we use to create our multiple tracks. The other one is called Audacity and I've got Audacity 2.1.2 here. I think there may be a newer version of that now, but that again also is online. You can see the address there and uh, download this piece of free software because this is essential for our recording. Now Audacity will uh, record any music or any sound coming through your computer, but first you have to set it up to do that. So we click up here on this drop down menu and uh, select WASAP and then also on this drop down menu you have to select speakers or headphones if you have that on your system. Now this will record anything, any sound coming through your computer system. We then go to uh, YouTube and I've selected one of my videos for the purposes of this demonstration and uh, it's just a simple one and now we go back to Audacity click on record go back to the video and then start the video where you want the sound to start recording and uh, you'll uh, see that um, it starts playing and if we check on Audacity it is actually recording the sound as we go along which is very good and uh, when you are uh, finished uh, recording, and that's entirely up to you when you want to stop, it's, it's all in real time, you can't actually download the file, so we're doing it the slow way here, I suppose. Um, you then uh, click stop, uh, go back and you might as well turn off your video. So we'll just cancel that out now, shut that down. Now uh, we can check how the video sounds. So um, what we'll do is, uh, uh, first of all, get it back to the start, click on play, yep, that sounds okay, going well, and we'll click stop again. Now we need to uh, save this um, and export it, so we go down to export audio, and of course I've already worked out the folder it's going into. It's in my Soundscape folder. Just give it a name and then uh, we'll click on Save and that will be saved. Don't worry about filling in anything there. Okay, job done. Now you can do a little test on this if you want, so just double click on it and your uh, media player will open the file and uh, we'll hear the sound of it playing, hopefully. So here we go. Yep, all sounds good. Okay folks, now we get down to the fun bit. We'll open Mixpad and uh, when you open it you have to certify that it's just for home use, so just click on certify. And uh, now we can load in a 
file so we'll look for Gourmet's theme and we'll load that in and you see it whacks it straight in the top track there the active track is always highlighted with that green strip yeah, above and below it and you can uh, see that we're testing playing it now you can change the balance you can move it to the left you can move it to the right uh, you can also uh, bring it back to the center again if you want to and you can tell when it's dead center by the zero percent you can change the volume by sliding the slider to the left to reduce the volume or you can bring it back up again now you can um, copy this uh, track that you've got here and add it to itself in effect or you can uh, you can add another file in if you wish uh, we'll just find a file to add in behind that uh, this one will do just click open you see it downloads it fairly quickly and it'll whack it in there just underneath now you can slide that up to there just by uh, clicking and dragging you test the sound or if you want to you can put it somewhere else you can create a new track you can drop it down there and you can uh, check how that sounds now obviously <coughs> the um, excuse me sounds a bit loud with the music so we can drag the volume down and uh, we might even put that in the left track in the left channel put this one in the right channel so you're starting to see what you can do now here with this with this program now if this was all just proper sound effects folks you can play around with the balance here until you start getting it right uh, another thing we can do is uh, change the name of the, the track they're all untitled when you first start but it's good to be able to identify its track so you can give it a name I mean if this was just sheep bleating uh, you could put sheep on there or something like that but we've got almost theme for that one and the one below we can do the same thing and uh, I mean if you had say eight or nine tracks it's uh, it's good to be able to identify what each one is instead of just looking at the the graph there to try and work out what the sound is some of them will have the the name on them as well uh, but uh, I found this uh, a bit I found it convenient anyway to, to do this to identify them easily you can also delete them fairly easily just by clicking on the cross uh, if you made a mistake you can uh, you can undo that you can return it to the status you had it before uh, as I said before we can um, copy uh, the stuff that's in there and uh, start to um, add it to itself or create a new track with the same sort of uh, uh, music or sound or whatever you've got um, I'm just having a little bit of trouble positioning this here I've got it right now here we go so we'll just paste that in there and uh, you can do it again if you want so you can see how if you had a reasonable size sort of uh, length of sound you can just copy it copy it and paste it and uh, create something very long actually We can also uh, try copying this one and we'll paste it into um, a new track in a different position. So it's quite versatile this program folks, I, I quite like it actually, you can move around. You can also uh, edit the sound in here as well uh, by trimming it and all that sort of thing. It's all fairly self-explanatory I would think. Um, you get, uh, if you click on a uh, on a file you'll get a right menu uh, right button menu come up as well you can see here you can slide them around they can overlap each other so lots you can do okay so you're happy with what you've uh, laid down as a soundtrack so just go up to file and it's a good idea to save your project and save it as a name uh, that uh, makes sense to you um, and makes it easier to find again so we'll just call this one video tests soundscape and we'll save that now let's just save that as a project file
Right, so we'll just uh, prove that we've saved it properly just by going back to the uh, open the project again. See the one we've just saved? Click open, butter bing, there it is. Simple as that, folks. Now, once you've finished with something, you really need to export it as um, an audio file. However, you can, you know, this program has other options as well. You can uh, export the project video, audio track, you can burn it as a CD or you can do what we're going to do and just export it as an audio file and uh, I've got this set up to go into that same folder again into the soundscape folder so um, it exports that one as a WAV file there are other formats but I've been using WAV so far now we can have a look at it in its folder and we can also do a bit of a test on it so we'll just um, double click on it and the media player again will open it up and start playing it and we can hear what it sounds like now we'll shut this down folks because what we need to do now is uh, do something I like to do which is balancing out the uh, the audio tracks on that file we just created and we'll do that in Audacity and it's called normalizing so what we do is load the file into Audacity and uh, we'll see that once it's in there that one track will have um, probably a louder sound profile than a, another track and if we use normalize in the effects menu we can balance them out uh, simply by lowering the volume in one track and raising the volume in the other so it's just loading the file in now and you can see yes the bottom track uh, has got a much larger profile than the top track so if we go into the effects menu and check um, normalize um, we should be able to correct that to a certain extent and uh, we'll click OK or we can do a preview if you like and uh, it will give you an indication of what it's like and I'll just click OK and it's working away at changing the profile and there you are, you are you can see it's more balanced now so I'll save that as um, a uh, separate file and uh, we can compare the two if, if uh, when they get onto the system and see if one is better than the other so we'll export the audio and uh, we'll use the uh, same file name but we'll just change it to uh, the normalized version so I can play one and then play the other on the system and see how they sound I, I think this one will sound better okay folks well I hope that makes sense and uh, hope you can get some value out of it and uh, yeah get out there and start putting those soundscapes together and uh, you'll be amazed at just how good it does sound when you've got it set up uh, as I said earlier uh, in the program that uh, you know, it's nice just to come out here and uh, listen to the birds and so on and not even run a train. It's very relaxing actually. So those relaxing soundscapes uh, have done their job I suppose at the end of the day. Anyway, have fun with it and I'll see you next week. Cheers. Gourmet. Mm -hmm.